Some right, so from here we will go to the bedroom. bedroom yeah. which is, I can go back to hand off hand Chris. Hand off Chris. That's right. Chris, you're the bedroom man. Yeah, you're back with me. <laughs> going back to the bedroom. Yeah. So I know the couch you're on pretty comfortable, right? But yeah. you know, what well, would be a bedroom without a bed? So we'll go and walk in here and. You know, again, energy conservation. I don't want the lights on when I'm not in the bedroom, right? So I also have my little fake TV come out, which right now we have displaying the dashboard. So in here, we're actually getting information from our smart bed about occupancy and firmness, right? So it's a pretty intelligent bed. Smart bed. Okay, this is scary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the idea of what we're wanting to do kind of in the bedroom here is kind of like similarly to how we were in the garage and in the lounge. You're entering the home and exiting the home from those situations. So that could be the beginning of certain scene and automations for entering, leaving the home. Similarly, you're starting and ending your day in the bedroom. So we're wanting to basically leverage the capabilities of a smart bed or, you know, other smart sensors within the bedroom to, you know, configure the home for ending the day or beginning of the day in certain ways. So again, a big aspect of this whole home and having these individual rooms as well, they, you know, we're showing them in more of a dispersed. Uh, tour, they're all interconnected and that we're having them all tied together for these more whole home autonomous based solutions. Okay. And that interconnectivity is a critical point because yes. obviously you're showing off certain features and mm -hmm. I can already think of other features and stuff and it's not going to be limited. People are going to come up with new ideas, use different sensors, yeah. you know, uh, different software. So how easy is it going to be to add new devices, new features, new functions to this smart home concept? So I would say the fact is we're trying to make it easier. And so I would say an emerging protocol that we're definitely, I'm sure you've heard about at CES is matter, mm -hmm. right? So we're it does matter. It does matter. Yeah. <laughs> so a big thing is we want to use this lab to show off some matter products as well and showing how easy it can be to add those into the home. Uh, it's a work in progress, right? So it's continually developing. So part of the use of this lab is we also have you know, products in here that are just commercially available products that we're using as a baseline, right? So the idea is we could change out, you know, the lights in here to different types of lights, or we can change out the speakers to different types of speakers. Maybe we can use a different type of EVK based, you know, safe cook range top. So the idea is you, while we're using certain products and certain EVKs now in the lab, we would want to be able to change those out with different products. Mm -hmm. So the idea is to test this interoperability as you were saying. Okay. Yeah. And the other thing I'll notice is, so right now we have the dashboard reporting that I am detected on the right side of the bed, right? So we have the firmness there. So the idea is, again, this is all tied to the whole home. And from there, we can enable, you know, a, you know, a bedtime mode or an awake mode, that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, oh, yeah, the other thing I will show is you saw the ceiling fan up here. Right now we had it off, but... We also have this enabled with our RT1060 for, you know, again, showing off our voice solution for independent control. So I'll go ahead and kind of show that off now. Hey, NXP. Hey, NXP. Turn on the fan. Okay. There you go. And get the fan turned on. Get a, and maybe, maybe it's a little dark in here. I maybe want some specific lighting for the bed. Hey, NXP. Hey, NXP. Hey, NXP. Well, now it doesn't want to listen to me anymore, the fan. <laughs> hey, NXP, turn on the light. Okay. And again, as I was saying, this is working lab. So the idea is some of these voice solutions, we're testing out different ones on different boards and looking to make sure that in various environments, they're working optimally. So the idea is we want things that initially come in here to have issues, to have problem sets that we're looking to solve. Because if it's just working off the bat, then we're not really innovating. So. Mm -hmm. Well, you've done a very realistic job. So, hey, NXP, book me for July 9th and 10th. <laughs> <laughs> well, I caught you there, Jim. <laughs> yeah. So we'll go ahead and exit the bedroom here. And Jim, you'd mentioned that for your own setup, that maybe the four speakers in our living room isn't quite up to your, uh, your audio. Oh, they'll be everywhere. Right? They'll be in the garage. They'll be in the house. Well, they'll be outside. Yeah. Well, so what I want to show you is we have a room here that uh, Haku, uh, who's very much involved in our audio system, is going to show off a very speaker dense room. So here, Haku, I'll go and hand you off. All right. Thank you, Chris. I'm Haku. Well, please find yourself your favorite seat. I would recommend the first row middle for the best experience. Should we get more in here? Go for it. Go for it. Yeah, we're going to join you, Jim. All right. Oh, please do. I'm going to first play. 
Actually, there are a couple more seats over here. Ovanos, you want to join us? Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> All right, have a seat. All right. Ready, everyone? This is Dolby Atmos, the world's first object-based cinematic audio. With powerful moving audio that transcends from channels to moving around you with pinpoint accuracy. Whether the soundscape sits the mood of a scene, captures the full extent Secret. of nature's fury. Okay, I know that probably doesn't come out completely on this video, but it's still seriously cool. Uh, well, thank <laughs> you. Well, so what you basically experienced, I'm pretty sure you're familiar with uh, the theory technology. So yes. this one, particular, uh, particularly speaking, is uh, Dolby, Dolby Atmos, which actually uh, brings you the 7.1.4 for this particular setup. Now, what we want to sell here is not Dolby, but what we want to sell is a full immersive experience that is actually um, brought to you by our i.mx. 8M Mini and Nano and Plus. So what we're trying to accomplish here is that the unification of DSP, microcontroller, and microprocessor all into one so that we can accomplish all of those functions. So we're talking about uh, rendering technology, post-processing, decoding, and also the controlling of the actual uh, infrastructure of the entire audio processing and also the system for the audio itself. So what we tried to do was that the, what we used to actually had to do was to um, combine all three different types of ASICs. So we're talking about microcontroller used to be its own chip. Uh, microprocessor used to be its own chip. DSP used to be its own chip. But now we're able to actually combine unify into just one chip. So we're able to basically consolidate everything that used to be really expensive into one entire unified system. So it's not just the OS, it's not just one, uh, three different ICs, but the, we're able to basically do a comprehensive uh, platform that actually uh, makes it much easier for uh, customers to uh, make a compact design. So what, what it used to be only for AV receivers, now we can actually fit it into things like sound bars or TVs, smart speakers. Those are the kind of things that we try to achieve with this. So this particular chip that actually uh, you're looking at, this is one of the example that you're seeing. So this particular one is Ida MXA AM Nano. Uh, what we actually um, have um, had you listen to was IMX uh, AM Mini. Uh, it, it's a sister chip, but these type of uh, compute module that we're actually using to um, design the uh, customer reference platform and a lot of the customers that um, potentially and also current and past customers also uh, used our system like these to uh, design and also manufacture a lot of these uh, home technologies. And it would, yeah, go ahead. Are there any customers that we can name or systems we can name using this technology today? Uh, I, I'm not really supposed to tell okay. you uh, okay. too many about it, but the, if you actually go to the Best Buys, um, you know, you, you, you'll probably see a lot of those uh, uh, products that are already available in the market. I'm looking forward to it. Well, and 
because typically when I think of a Navy mm -hmm. receiver, it is huge. Yes. So I'm, it'd be nice to know which ones I can get the latest technology in. Okay. Well, well, we'll do that later. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> of course. But uh, yeah, so any other questions about this? No, uh, it, it's incredible. And, and I can, you know, I, I can see the value uh, in the fact that you can put this solution almost anywhere. You don't yes. have to build a whole rack to be able to do it. You can even have the, in the intelligence within mm -hmm. the speakers, within pretty much anything you want. Yes. So that's that's impressive. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, I'm pretty sure you're familiar with a lot of the, the past AV receiver designs. Yes. Where it used and to disappointed be like, with most of them, too. Yeah, it's, a, it's <laughs> huge. Well, first of all, it's huge, right? And yeah. it has a lot of, like, digital specific chips. Uh, and uh, so you have um, PCB after PCB that is dedicated only for video, only for audio. But we were able to basically simplify a lot of those designs. Well, and they're also prone to failure. A lot of times. Correct. Correct. So you have, you know, uh, the typical age of, uh, I would say, a new audio receiver is typically mm -hmm. only a couple of years. I've blown through more than I can name. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised that's, if that's the case. Yeah. So we're also trying to um, up the reliability in terms of uh, the longevity as well. Mm -hmm. So we try to um, think about how the design, certain designs affect the customers as well in okay. terms of. Um, I, I will say though, we have to work on your music list here because um, I'm not seeing a whole lot of love or <laughs> any of the songs I really want to rock out to. <laughs> <laughs> yes. A little bit more of that. Exactly. What's yeah. it do? Brainstorm over the, the, oh, the maze? I can do the maze actually. Yeah, amaze is pretty good. This is just for our, our yeah, people. Sure. Like, yeah, sure. <laughs> Let me just make sure that. Uh, uh, um, let's see. Okay. All right, here we go. Oops. That's with, let's see, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11 speakers and a subwoofer. So, yeah, so this particular setup for configuration is a 9.1.6, but what I was actually rendering everything in 7.1.4 right now. And it still sounded incredible. So, okay. All righty. Next time I want you to rock me, Amadeus. Of course. <laughs> 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 